I love Star Wars. <laughs> the thing I love most about it are the complex stories and all of the huge expanded universe that's been created from the books and the TV shows and the comics and the video games. I mean, this has created thousands and thousands of different characters and stories. And I'm going to share just a few of these stories and characters with you that I guarantee will make you view the Star Wars in a completely different light. So the Rebel Alliance symbol. It has an interesting history. It's called the Starbird, or the Phoenix. Now, Darth Vader had a secret apprentice a couple years before A New Hope named Galen Merrick. His code name was Starkiller. And Darth Vader actually tasked Starkiller to create a Rebel Alliance to confuse the Emperor and distract him so that Vader could overthrow him and then rule the galaxy. But what he didn't count on was Starkiller betraying him. Now, he got killed in the process, but the Rebel Alliance he created turned into the Rebel Alliance. So to honor his memory, the Rebel Alliance took his family crest, the Starbird, and made that their symbol. And it shows up in the movies on helmets, on uniforms, on the spaceships, all in memory of Vader's secret apprentice. So we also have the opening crawl of Star Wars. It talks about the first victory that the rebels scored against the Galactic Empire and how they stole the secret Death Star plans. This is actually part of a larger operation called Operation Skyhook. Now, someone who played an integral role in Operation Skyhook was a woman called Bria Theron, and she was Han Solo's ex-girlfriend. <laughs> she was actually involved in the Battle of Tapwara, and she was the one who actually beamed the secret Death Star plans to Princess Leia's spaceship, the Tantai IV. And we all know that that leads into the very opening scene of Star Wars. Now, Bria actually didn't survive the battle. She was killed along with her entire group, and Han found out about that moments before meeting Obi-Wan and Luke in the Mos Eisley Cantina. We also meet this guy in the Mos Eisley Cantina, Greedo the Bounty Hunter. Now, he's after Han Solo to collect the bounty on him that Jabba the Hutt's posted, but he is kind of unfortunate. As we all know, Han shot first. <laughs> And Greedo ended up a crispy alien. But Han's a nice guy, so he flips the bartender a credit coin and apologizes for the mess. But what Han doesn't know is that the bartender, Wu Her, he's actually a drink maker. And he's been trying and trying and trying to create the perfect drink for Jabba the Hutt. But he needs one last ingredient. So he kind of gets a bright idea. So he takes the charred corpse of Greedo, <laughs> and he feeds it into his distillery droid, C2R4. And lo and behold, it is the perfect ingredient to make his drink for Jabba the Hutt. I don't know, I wouldn't drink it. <laughs> now, this famous scene from Empire Strikes Back features some bounty hunters, most notably Boba Fett, but also IG-88, the assassin droid. There's actually four versions of IG-88, A, B, C, and D. The one here is IG-88B. He actually tracks Han Solo to Cloud City, but is intercepted by none other than Boba Fett. And Boba Fett, in his nice way, disposes of him. And you can actually find the charred remains of IG-88B in the scene where Chewbacca is collecting the dismembered pieces of C-3PO in the bowels of Cloud City. But IG-88A actually was able to implant his assassin droid brain into the second Death Star. <laughs> And he also managed to program all droids across the galaxy to have a droid revolt, like in Terminator. But, and he actually even controlled the super laser at the Battle of Endor, true story. And, <laughs> but the Rebel Alliance destroyed the second Death Star, not only ending the Empire, but also stopping a galaxy-wide droid revolt. Little did they know. So there's thousands and thousands of stories just like this out there that'll help you view the movies in an entirely different way, I guarantee it. So pick up a book or a comic book or a graphic novel or a video game, and you'll really, really enjoy the really vast, expanded Star Wars universe. But at the very least, go home to your DVD shelves or your friend's DVD shelves, I'm sure you have them. Rewatch this original trilogy, and I can guarantee you'll watch Star Wars completely different. <laughs>